others so that at any given moment in time you have some fields in the world that are in a rising curve and others that are at a declining curve. So if you're looking at oil, for example, there are some fields that are still on a rising curve of production, many others that are at a declining stage of development. You can get a, a, a sna you, what you can do is to take a, a look at all of these and plot the global life cycle of oil. And that's what I'm going to speak about now. And the same thing with natural gas. If you look at the global situation with respect to all of the oil fields in the world, it appears as if we are at this moment, at this historic moment in time, very near or at the peak moment of global world oil production of conventional liquid oil. That is, if you look at the average of all the fields, as many fields are, as, are in decline as are rising. Right now, where the world's oil fields are producing about 85 million barrels per day, we may not rise beyond that. Perhaps a bit higher, 90 million barrels per day, maybe a little bit beyond that, but I don't think we're going to see the world's oil fields rising much beyond that. Nonetheless, the U.S. Department of Energy says that world energy demand will reach 115 million barrels per day in energy demand by 2030. I don't think the world's oil fields are anywhere near capable of reaching that level of demand. Now, uh, there are unconventional sources of supply that can supplement a little bit the, 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 the conventional is, is liquid oil in known fields. There are unconventional sources of supply, Arctic oil, tar sands in Canada, Canada Venezuelan heavy oil, um, and, and some other, uh, other unconventional sources of supply that may add another five or 10 million barrels a day and stretch out the peak moment for a period of time. But I don't believe, and please feel free to question me about this when, when you have the opportunity uh, but I think all of the evidence suggests that we are now at, uh, approaching now or in the next year or so, uh, we are at that moment in the history of the petroleum age that we are seeing the maximum sustainable output of conventional petroleum. What about natural gas? Natural gas is also a finite substance. It was developed later than oil, so it's not quite as far along in its, in its uh, historic life cycle. Uh, it, it, it has a little bit more life in it, but it too will reach a peak of production probably a decade or so from now. Then it too will begin a decline. These are admittedly estimates. Um, and they're, they're subject to all kinds of unforeseen um, developments. Uh, tomorrow, you could read in the newspaper, there's been some new discovery, but the fact of the matter is that the peak in new discovery of oil was in the 1960s and 70s, and there have been very, very few new discoveries of oil fields since the 1960s. Uh, there's been, uh, most, most of the oil that we rely on today is from fields that were discovered 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, and they are now in decline. Very few new fields have been discovered since then, and the ones that have been found in the North Sea and the North Slope of Alaska are either in decline today or soon will be, and they're smaller than the big fields that were discovered before then. 
natural gas reached its peak of discovery of big fields in the 1970s and 80s, and there have not been big new discoveries since then. So we are facing the historic uh, uh, peak in these uh, fuels, and likely they will start reaching uh, a point of contraction in the not too distant future. When exactly that will occur can be is a matter of debate, but not, not the uh, reality. So what does this mean for us? Well, the most obvious uh, effect is economic. And we see that every single day in the newspaper with demand rising, more money chasing after a if not yet diminishing supply of resources, but a supply that's not growing as rapidly as demand, the price is rising. And we see that with the price of oil reaching close to its historic uh, peak of $101 a barrel last week. We got as high as $98 a barrel. And mind you, the, the record high of $101 a barrel in 1980 was a spike due to uh, a crisis in Iran that was not a long-term high price. What we see now is a, a price rise that is likely to be sustained because of systemic problems of supply and demand. We see this also this increased uh, rise in demand with insufficient supply and the intense competition between the United States and China and Japan and India and European companies to buy up what remains of the available untapped fields around the world. And we also see it in the efforts of the energy producing countries like Venezuela and Russia and Kazakhstan to seize control of their assets and to turn them over to their national oil companies and to use that as an exclusive source of wealth for their own countries. All of this has uh, accelerated rapidly in the past few years and altered the international economics of energy. But that's the economic side. Far more serious in my view is the geopolitical and military consequences of this historic moment. What we see is the growing 